don't forget to uh, don't don't neglect your uh, alcohol there at the end at the bottom. The bottom. That's abuse. Shit, you don't want to abuse your alcohol. Yeah, this guy. Yeah. And we'll finish it with some room six whiskey. Mm. Finish it with some room six brewski. Over here we got room six. Room six ale. Ale. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Apparently now I'm a tavern. Hey. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local music scene and the people that make it, including me and my guests. My guests today are a husband and wife duo specializing in hip-hop, rap, R&B, and pop. They are official artists on Bone Thugs and Harmony's record label, The Life Entertainment. The mission statement is to resurrect class, maturity, and unity through music and entertainment. And uh, they're one part Cali and one part KC. Please welcome to the channel, Get Addicted Mafia. Say hi, guys. What's good? What's up, everybody? Yes! <laughs> All right. Definitely, definitely not the first take of that. <laughs> Three, two, one. I said it wrong. Three, two, one. Welcome. Do you mind, dog? One part Cali and one part KC. Please welcome to the channel. Damn, dog! <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's gonna go viral. <laughs> that part's gonna go viral. So me. Welcome to room six. <laughs> and see. I'm dedicated to the local music scene and the people that make it, including myself and these guys. A freaking dog, I swear to God. Remind the dog. Keep going, John. Remind the dog. Keep going. Okay. Keep going. The last time I swear, I'm just going for it. Balls to the wall. Three, two, one. I want to officially welcome you to the show. We're going to have a little Black Caribbean rum here. A little hog Some bay. Rum, all right. All right. Welcome to room six. What do you think? <laughs> Wait for it. That's a great. All right. Mm. Highly recommend hog bay, Black Caribbean rum. Oh. Only as a cold shot, though. You do not want to sip this or sip, t drink it at room temperature. Don't forget to uh, don't don't neglect your uh, alcohol there at the end at the bottom. The bottom. That's abuse. Shit, you don't want to abuse your alcohol. Yeah, this guy. And we'll finish it with some room six whiskey. Mm. Finish it with some room six brewski. Over here we got room six. Room six ale. Ale. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Apparently now I'm a tavern. Hey. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, if you for those of you that don't know who Get Addicted Mafia are. Thank you for watching, number one. Number two, go ahead and introduce yourselves and tell them what you do and who you are. I am First Lady Frankie, one half of Get Addicted Mafia, wifey, <laughs> and I am a rapper, singer, songwriter, and that is it. <laughs> yes, I am <clears throat> I'm Bad Habit, Mr. Hubby, Get Addicted, it's my <laughs> wife, we specialize in what he said earlier. <laughs> Room six. Get addicted. That's what we're here to do. Nice. Um <laughs> I, I thank thank you for shouting me out it's five seconds ago. I appreciate that. So Yes. So first lady frankly, before we get into my usual interview questions that I ask of all my prey, mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you a particular question. Okay. Sure. You had a baking company? I did. I, I still do, actually. Wow. I was going to ask, did you carry it over? Cause <laughs> you had it in, um, was it LA or San Bernardino? I started in Los Angeles, and I, now I'm currently in Las Vegas. So, yes, I'm still baking. I actually have a baby shower coming up in a month, so not for I'm you. excited. No, not for you. I was going to say, not for you. <laughs> um, what's, yeah. Do you want to shout out your baking company? Uh, yes, I am Frankie's Cake Habit. And it is actually my husband and I. It's our baking company. Is he helps a lot? You crack all um, the eggs. <laughs> Yo, till four in the morning. Guy. Man, I've been there. <laughs> not not to make this about me, but I remember growing up. Uh, my dad tried having a catering business, and my dad was a really good cook. Um, and I remember getting paid like five or ten bucks as a, a teenager to just make like. 
five hundred egg rolls in one night. Wow. Um, I got yeah. shot. I got I got screwed on that deal, but yes, yeah. Definitely. But it's, um it's a lot of work. So it's, it's um strictly baking? Baked, uh, baked yes, goods, I should mostly say. Mostly baked goods. I did a couple like rice krispies and here and there, but mostly cookies, cupcakes, cakes. Do you, you don't do any of the like sculpting or the making the big things out of it? Um no, not yet. No, I haven't did so that's where the rice krispies yet, come in. <laughs> but yes. Um I've had like maybe some stars, you know, mm-hmm. some hearts and stars. I did have some cake pops that looked like pina coladas. <laughs> I love cake pops. <laughs> yeah. they, wait, they looked like they cake, pina coladas? They were they looked like pina coladas. The, yes. the, were they pina colada flavored? Um, well, no, they actually weren't. They were like chocolate and coconut, different flavors. Okay, they, so you fooled I them. I pretty much have to make what's requested. Well, yeah, obviously, yeah. yeah. But yeah, if you want to try some, by all means, hit her up. Um, hit them up, sorry. Definitely, definitely. So before we get Thank on to, you. no worries, before we get on to you. Yes, sir. I wanted to ask <laughs> both of you. Because you both, you come from kind of slightly different musical backgrounds, right? Yes. You grew up in the hip-hop game under the name Bad Habit. Yes. <clears throat> and you grew up more, or came up more of the R&B and soul singing, right? Yes. Cool. Sure. How, number one, did the fusion happen before the relationship? Yes, it did. Because, <laughs> I mean, the bio reads kind of like, oh, and, you know, we met 2013 or whatever it was, and, and then... Oh, by the way, that we're married. And so I was wondering which came first, you know, because some couples, they're like, oh, I'm doing this thing and I'm doing this thing. And you do, and eventually you you hook up and you you become a a, a thing. And you're like, hey, why don't we become a thing together? So I didn't know if that was what happened. Yeah, we were just talking about that earlier, actually. Yeah, I was, I was just, I wasn't very, um, what's the word I can use, like serious about the music scene in Los Angeles. It's a Um, weird scene from what I hear. Oh, yeah, it is. Well, especially when you're just out there alone and a female, right. you know, and you don't really know anyone. Like, I was from Kansas, of course. So, you know, I was very particular about who I created with and who I was in the studio with, who I allowed around me and in my energy when I made music, you mm-hmm. know. And um, I actually Facebook requested him. And uh, he already had a group, Get Addicted Mafia. It was all fellas. <laughs> so that's how I became the first lady. Ah, Frankie. there it become. There it is. For sure. Yep. Now, currently, Get Addicted Mafia is just the two of you because you're here in Vegas now. Yes. Yeah, right. And and you you've kind of, I won't say had to start over from where you because you were you were doing a lot of shows from what I could see. Oh yeah. In in just the whole. Sam, whole L.A. Valley, really. Right. So, Mr. Habit. Yes, sir. You opened for a boxer? Oh, sh- hey, Yo, this guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man, I did. Shout out to Favai and Efren Esquivez <clears throat> from my city of Carson. You know. How do you open, as a rapper, how do you open for a boxer? Did you do, like, his walkout or? I did his walkout. Okay. Because yes. I'm like, they didn't set up a... St- like they have you in the ring? I got. I was in the ring. Right on. It, it was like, but I mean, it wasn't was like they didn't have a whole show before the boxing match. No, not not at all. Not at all. That's no. actually dope. That that's. Okay. He's like, I want you to 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 basically wrap me out there. Yeah, man. I'm again, man. I'm grateful. Uh, Favai from Island Avenue, it's just one of my mentors and you know uh, family. Yeah. <clears throat> Him and Efren Esquivez once again gave me that opportunity. You know. And they they felt like I was dope enough to to bring them out, and you know I did my I did what I do best. I got out there, I performed a song called "I Am the W." Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was gonna ask what song did you use, and that totally makes sense for that a boxer. Yeah, yeah. I am yeah. the win. Nice. I'm the win. It, it stood for I am the West. Oh, I'm like the West Coast, but you know. We could have branded it like that because it was. I just assumed again when that was yeah you you assumed right, right, but you got it yeah. right you got it right right on we utilized yeah. it that night for that purpose so right on yeah. um all right I, I want to dig into some of my more usual interview questions if you don't okay. mind I, I'm I'm done like digging around your past that that, that was that was yeah that was great <laughs> that was no worries that was awesome. um there's my there's my Sean Evans Nardwar moment yes so, sir yeah I was wondering. Let's talk earliest musical influence. And I mean, I'm talking, what is that first 
moment where you're like, I want to do that. Whether it was a particular song or someone you saw or, or a particular genre of music or whatever, or an instrument even. I, I really can't, like, it's no significant moment. Okay. That it, I can pinpoint, to be honest with you. Um, but what I can say is, I remember <clears throat> my mother tells me this all the time, mm -hmm. but she said, when I was a baby, like, on to, you know, to like a walk, but she said, "Well, baby, she, I used to cry a lot." And she um tried this, tried that, but um, music was the stimulation to me. I believe it. She, she said that she would calm you down. Boombox, yes, yeah, she just put a boombox next to me. Then you know we had boomboxes, you know. Mm -hmm. so, and she see, turned kids. on some music. You see, kids, right? there used to be these. <laughs> Giant things called boom boxes. Yeah, you put an yeah. audio cassette in. And if you're yeah. lucky, if you're lucky, you had some really, really perfect recordings off the radio on that audio cassette. Right. Right. Oh, but yeah, yes. she used to put that next to me and that would, I would stop crying. Like I would be good. And I believe a part of that, including Bone Thugs and Harmony. Now this, this is a story we'll probably get into a little later, but. Walters and Harmony had a, had a great influence on me, like... And now you're on their record label. <laughs> God, thank you. But anyway, yeah, that's... Um, I could say uh, part of that and then part of influences in hip-hop within those times <clears throat> kind of made me start writing um, their lyrics down on paper and kind of reciting and stuff. You know what I mean? Like, that was fun. I had friends then that was also pretty much interested in that same scene, music. Mm -hmm. right. And yeah. so I was, you know, we was feeding off each other that energy. I remember um, we was in the uh, Scottsdale in Carson, you know, where I grew up. Right. <clears throat> and we used to write, we used to freestyle, we used to do a lot of, a lot of different emulate, uh, you know how we used to emulate impressions. like yeah. impressions with like mm -hmm. Ball Thugs and Tupac and you know <clears throat> back then that it was heavy you know what I mean especially on the west coast so uh, that had a heavy influence in my music and I was inspired by that then as well as uh you know um the overall uh Like the overall, losing my train of thought here. It's okay. Um, the overall, uh, uh, effect oh. it had on me. There you, you know go. I mean? Like, the overall effect it had on me was my environment. It was, okay. it was just there. You know, so. There you go. Mm -hmm. Frankie? Um, the first time I knew I wanted to do this, um, I do remember at a very young age, very, very young, being like behind my mom's seat in the car mm -hmm. and feeling like I was performing the songs that she was playing. And that would be anything from The Element to Al Green, Whitney Houston, uh, Take Six. She exposed me to a lot of uh, different sounds. But when I knew it was what I wanted to do, I uh, was in Bible class. Um, I was maybe nine or 10 and, uh, my older brother had a lead in the choir where he rapped, right? So okay. he had always done this rap and I was in the choir next to my grandmother and my mom and my uncle was choir director. So I was used to it. It was what I enjoyed doing and I always looked forward to it. And one day in choir rehearsal, uh, my brother was getting ready to do the rap, do not pass me by which was actually a song we did that was, um, it was MC Hammer. It was an MC Hammer gospel song <laughs> that well, my brother did. MC yeah. Hammer did a gospel? Well, no, I can he I can did. see it. I mean, I know he eventually ended up like having his own church. Yes, but yes. It was a hit. <laughs> I don't remember that one. Yeah, it was called Do Not Pass Me Do By. Not. And uh, he had three cold verses. My brother used to, he used to do it and, that day in rehearsal, I asked my uncle, like, Uncle, I want to do Do Not Pass Me By today, just for fun. I want to do it and just a rehearsal, you know. 
And he didn't take me very seriously at first, but he eventually let me get the mic. And this was like when the choir was all sitting down, intermission, they're drinking mm-hmm. their water, taking their breaks. There's no pressure. And it's just me up on the mic and the music comes on and I start to rap. And everybody that was not paying attention started to pay attention. And I'm on beat and, you know, and um, it was really no hard feelings between my brother and I. He was proud of me. He really was. But Aww. I ended up doing that rap from then on. In Bible class, Aww. it was it became it was like handed down to me. So I knew then, like when I saw my brother do it, mm-hmm. it was like this is what I want to do. My brother can do it; I can do it too. See, so, now see, this is where the the general the generational difference between me and you two is because mm-hmm. when I was in Bible class, I, I I went through the whole Catholic thing and everything. Uh, rap was not part of the deal okay um and and it was not a it was not a um it wasn't so much the type of music it was well you know we sing hymns here right period i don't care what's on the radio we you know and at that point it was like you know bon jovi it was all the 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 it was the 80s yeah you know Mm -hmm. 70s and 80s and so i was not hearing anything like that in Bible class or, or in, you know, certainly not as an altar boy <laughs> singing oh, yeah. in the choir, you know, yeah. we, no, nobody was rapping in the choir in, in uh, Victorville, California, but, <laughs> right. but, uh, I no, see, that's see. awesome that they were, they were inclusive oh, yeah. like that. Definitely. Definitely. Right. And our choir was very versatile. We did a little bit of everything. Now, was had, this in Kansas city? Yes. Yes. Okay. My, my uncle was our music director. So we did a little, every, oh, that everything. Helps. <laughs> Shaka Khan, Michael Jackson, Shaka but it was Khan. gospel music to their <clears throat> to their music right on so, nice. yeah well, i tell you what a, a, it's amazing how many uh singers come through this kitchen that have been in choir oh, yes. have been in some sort of you know that thing where the training you get without even knowing it you can Man. hear it like the vocal runs and and just everything it stays um, with you it, it does stay with you um <laughs> me i can sing in Five part harmony if I have to. There you go. Yeah. Will be <laughs> right. That and a dollar fifty will get me a coke. But uh, <laughs> real quick, yeah, we're gonna take we take a quick booze break here because I'm already getting low. Hey, booze break. We're back, and I have a question for y'all. What is the one thing you would like to see different? Actually, no. Let me back up. How long have you both been in Vegas? Living here? Two and a half years. Okay. So you've been in the scene a little bit, right? Started, yeah. I was going to ask because I know you got to you know, move and, and it takes a little while to ramp up to performing again. Right. Um, which is why you hit the showcases and doing some other stuff. Right. Is there anything you've seen in the local scene that you wish was, is, is like, oh man, I was hoping we got away from that or that you really, really like? Or is it too early? <laughs> hmm. Wow, I stumped him. That's a good question. That's why I asked. Yeah, him. man. <laughs> um, I really like Hal's situation, like because yeah, he definitely. able to. It's such a positive environment for any level of performer. Yeah. In fact, exactly. I, I, you get more applause at Soul Belly if you screw up. <laughs> if you own it right. and you're just like oh my god I can't believe I messed up people are like it's okay no problem yeah go for it yeah. whereas I remember a time I've been there where people are just like well then why did you come or you know get off the stage um, I don't know how it is in like LA San Bernardino area especially in the, the hip hop R&B uh, world but how how is it right now after COVID and quarantine and everything did you see a um, like there, people were a little more less clicky and a little bit more, just like live music, live music, or or was it kind of more of the same? Because here, the second live shows were a thing, it didn't matter what you played; it was a packed house, and right. everybody was happy. And even though we had masks on, I'm physically touching another person, and we're in a crowd and and listening to live music, and this is amazing. So I was wondering, how was the scene where where you're from? Compared to that, 
Well, I feel the scene in Los Angeles, um, we, we did have a variety of different places that we, you know, we performed at, but our main spot, um, I did notice, you know, prior to COVID, there were, um, you know, artists that were new every show, art, new artists every show. Um, now it's kind of down to a certain roster, you know, just we're only playing these artists at certain places that we used to perform at. So, so it wasn't that people stopped trying to perform. It was that they were cold or they were like, you know, we're, we're, we're going with the, the sure things. Um, I mean, I don't know for sure if that's what they decided. That's what um, it felt like, though. But, yeah, I know when when we were on that scene, it was um, it was just, what's the word I could use? There were rappers everywhere, <laughs> you know, just everywhere. So now it's, in my opinion, because um, we've done a couple, uh, like, local rap shows, it's still kind of like that. Um, but I feel like what's, um, what's the best way I can, it's, it's not really, um, like everything kind of is the same. Okay. Everything, in my opinion, you know, that's just I how really, I feel you, right now. Um, you mean a lot of people sound the same, a lot of acts sound the same? When they get up on stage, it sounds like. The same song, different yeah. words. I like to say all music is thievery because... True. <laughs> there's, we only have 26 letters in the alphabet, you know, and there's only eight notes in the octave. You can only do so much that is truly unique and still people like. You know? Very true. Because I can very make true. unique music, but it's, no, it's not going to be really what I would call music. Yes, very true. I agree with you, but, well, like, this is how I, like, if I was to rap... In the style of Tupac, for example, and I rapped and I used his riffs in the way that he uh, articulates his verbiage. Um, it would be accepted, but then if someone right after me comes and does it, and then someone right after them comes and does it, it's kind of like, well, is this what everybody's doing right now? It's or who's creating <laughs> what they feel? Are you creating what you hear? Or are you creating what you feel? Right. Because I feel a lot of times we're just trying to recreate sound because it's popular and people will gravitate to it for a quick second until I can make another one. Right. But we're into making music that sticks with you. And it, and we want our goal is to make music that is timeless. You can still turn it on 20 years from now and still listen to it. And I feel like we get that... Um, I feel like we get that feedback when we're actually on stage and when we give the audience that energy. I've had female rappers come to me after shows like, "Do you did you witness what you just did?" You know, and and I'm <laughs> I <was> humble, <laughs> right? And I'm humble, but I'm I'm grateful that we're able to get our point across. Right. It's know? a weird. I I have the same thing. Humble brag time. It's a weird dichotomy of. I know where I screwed up at that performance, but at the same time, when someone says, you were great, that was awesome, blah, 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 you're like, I know. I mean, inside, you're like, mm, thanks, right. yes, I expected this response. Mm -hmm. You're never just right. like, really? Because you've heard it so much, and I get it, but at the same time, mm -hmm. every musician is insecure. That's right. Every songwriter is yeah, so yeah. insecure, and we know every mistake we did, and thank you for all the positive right. comments. Applause is a drug. Thank you. <laughs> but um, I, I agree with you that it is so hard to have a sound that is just yours. Mm -hmm. It is so hard. I always respect someone who's like, I see what you did there. This is sticking with me, but it's not uh, 10 other people are doing the same exact thing. I'm not going to hear this. You know, what I really love is when I hear, hey, this is a new song I'm trying out. Mm -hmm. Even if it bombs, even bombs. if they, they keep right. stopping and blowing it, blowing yeah. it, screwing up, I respect that so much, especially yes. at the, the showcase or open mic level. They're like, hey, I'm trying this thing. I'm not putting this out for like sale or anything, but I'm trying this thing. Please right. be nice. I really respect that mm -hmm. um, because, especially in this day and age with, you know, TikTok 
and um, YouTube shorts and, and, and just that, that attention span. You know, you got to grab them, you got to grab them. I always respect someone who's like, hey, here's a new thing I'm trying out. And they do it. And whether you like it or not, you got to respect the bravery. It. That's um, right. Absolutely. You know, <clears throat> one of the, uh, there's a local performer. He runs uh, open mic over at the Shag Room. Mm-hmm. I forget what hotel that's in. But uh, down the strip. And he's been in all sorts of things and all sorts of places. His name is Sean Eiferman. I for short. Sean, you're probably not watching this, but he you will. he will tag him, tag him. <laughs> but uh, he he does a really good job of giving people the opportunity to to blow it and and be supportive, and he doesn't tolerate any just like how he doesn't tolerate any sort of heckling in the crowd, any mm-hmm. sort of negativity. And he's uh, just like Hal again. Can on the if if he's on the microphone and somebody in the crowd is trying to turn it, you know, oh, the damn Democrats, or you know, just turning it into right. a negative situation. He has a really amazing talent, just born of years and years and years of being on stage, of turning it into a positive, and everybody's laughing and having a good time. And hey, and by the way, here's who's next. And and as someone who used to run open mics in this town, I'm sitting there just going. <laughs> right. I couldn't have Quality done. It. I control. wouldn't have done that. I would have removed that person probably. Right. Security. But, yeah. But uh, the the point I was going to make with Sean was more than once I would watch him performing at like House of Blues, uh, the upstairs part, and he'd be performing original. I mean, uh, his uh, acoustic originals and covers, mostly covers, because House of Blues. Mm-hmm. And because of the way House of Blues is set up, sometimes he wouldn't be on a stage. He would be on a pass-through area where there's some steps and dining, and somebody would just kind of walk through where he's oh, playing yeah. and stop. Gosh. And more than <laughs> once, I would hear him on the microphone say, hey, are you in show business? No? Then get the fuck off the stage. Right? <laughs> and, wow, yeah. and I always loved that. I was like, <gasps> yeah. Brave. That, yes. Yeah. And, um, I don't know where I was going with Drink that. Drink to that shit. Right? <laughs> There you Hello. go. Room six. There you go. Mm. Yeah. I don't know where I was going with that. About the uh, everybody sounds uh, the same. Oh, but basically, if you're a performer and you're watching this, especially if you're a newer performer and you're just trying to start thinking about maybe going out and putting your stuff out there in front of people, don't worry. It's going to be okay. That's right. Unless you're out there singing about like hate speech or something. <laughs> Everybody's gonna just be so happy to see you try, okay. And if they're not, find yourself a new scene, okay. Don't let one person or one group of people ruin music for you, okay. Absolutely. There you go. That's that's uh, life tips with Josh. Hey, so (laughs) all right, a couple more questions, a couple more questions, and then we'll get to the the live performance. So you're almost Mm -hmm. done. Do either of you play any instruments? No. Okay. Not currently. I, I played violin in high school. Okay. Because right, usually I'll say, let's talk gear. But <laughs> you just roll up and, and rock whatever they give you. Yeah. Which, good on you. Like, it makes your life a lot easier. Like, you, know, you want to be the, 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 you want the easiest job in the band? Play harmonica. <laughs> um, <thanks. laughs> Basically. Or just be a singer. But, uh, so I won't ask you that question, and I, I instead I'm going to ask, what's your favorite show memory as Get Addicted Mafia? Could favorite be good, show. could be bad. What is that memory that's just like, wow, that was a show, or or that checked off a moment on the old you know star checklist, or or somebody went to jail, or you know whatever. <laughs> what is your favorite show memory? Um, <clears throat> Tell the so, people. Yo, my. We individuals as well, so but we could agree, you know. But Hawaii, Hawaii, oh, Hawaii party. Yeah, they really were live. Like they were, you know. Yeah. Um, for them not to know us, and we just coming through. Where'd um, you play? If I may ask. For Bone Thugs and Harmony, you know what? Um, it was in Honolulu. Of course it was, because it was Bone Thugs and Harmony. Specific. Um, oh, that was part. You were on the, the tour with them, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was Kauai. 
Yeah, it was Honolulu and then Kauai. Right on. And then Maui. Yeah, I, but um, Hawaii was live because they showed love and yes. support. You know, even if they didn't know us, they know who who we were with. Right. You know, and I could just remember it being. It was outdoor. It was um, the weather was Hawaii and beautiful. You know, yeah. and the crowd was live. Like they were chanting with us. Everything we told them to do, they just oh just man, super live. <laughs> yeah. I always wanted that you know moment. I, mean? I always wanted that moment of just Definitely. having the crowd just be there from the second you walk out, and just yeah. being able to say, you know, yell something and they yell back. Yeah. That's right. awesome. That's a, that's an awesome memory. Yeah, Hawaii was it was great. Yeah. Do you have? Any, do you remember any? Other? Beat that, uh, my my best memory <laughs> that we had at a show. We used to open mm-hmm. at the observatory in Orange County. Yep. And uh, we did 30 shows there, at least. About 30 that. plus. Um, but we opened for Bone at the observatory when we first met them. That was like where we actually, you know, first met them. Um, we ended up having another show with them in downtown LA um, at the Novo, yeah, yeah. and that was when we sealed the deal. You know, we got, we exchanged numbers and everything, but back to the observatory in Orange County, um, Dope. we, we traveled with Bone for a little while, and we were actually able to return to the observatory with Bone, Dope. like, same truck, guards, paparazzi, the whole thing, you know. So it was, yeah, yeah. it was yeah, really was like we're here, you know. Yeah, we've, we've come back and we've arrived, you know. Yes. So yeah, and the the uh, staff that were um, the people that were on staff there that were used to seeing us all the time were like so proud, like they were just coming to us like, wow, you guys. You know, you're here, you did it. Yeah, you stepped up. Because usually we come through the crowd, you know. This time, gates were open for us. We came in black yeah. trucks. <laughs> so Shout out was, to SES so out the house. You know, yes. For Shout out to Janet. With those opportunities. As Absolutely. Well. Nice. Now, uh, Bone Thugs, they're still performing, right? Oh, yes. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah, tomorrow. They're yeah. in Vegas tomorrow. At a Vegas, oh, they are. Vegas yeah. show tomorrow at the Orleans. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, that's right. At time of recording, they're going to be performing tomorrow at, at opening up for them. I totally didn't even connect the two for some reason that you're performing at the Orleans and that Bones Hoax is in town. Um, right on. Oh, yeah. Huh. Well, that's that's awesome. And I would go, but I'm going to be out of town, unfortunately. Got to go hang out. I got to go hang out with my mom's, you know. Nice. Dope. She's 87, so got to gotta right. get it when I can. Beautiful. That's <sighs> a blessing, right? Yeah, she's three hours south of here, so it's... Cali? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Uh, Victorville. Oh, yeah. Yep. Nice. So I got to I gotta go. Gotta, you got to go have lunch with mom. Yes. Yeah. 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 Shout out to moms. Right Definitely. On. So um, thanks for also for answering the question of how did you get like on the label? How did you meet them and all that? So um, that's cool. Last question. You made it. Hey. <laughs> Let's pretend we're talking to little Frankie, little Habit. Okay. Hey. What we're really doing is we're talking to new musicians here. Okay. Um, I, I, I really like to aim a lot of what I do at newer musicians because so many I am so many people's first interview. It, it's hmm. ridiculous. But also uh, because when you're a new musician and you start thinking about, I feel, clown, I feel like I can put my music in front of people. It's, you remember, it's nerve-wracking. And it, you're, you're never like 100% confident that uh, you don't know how it's going to go because mm-hmm. everybody you've seen has been better than you or in your mind, you know? Mm. So I wanted to say, what is one thing you wish someone had told you before you started down this twisted path that is music? And it, it could be a warning. It could be advice. Or whatever. <clears throat> um, for me, it's about the business and the music because they don't tell you that if you don't have a manager, if you don't have nobody really backing you, like a machine, a big machine or some investors or whatnot, you will have to do everything on your own. You know, as mm-hmm. a musician, you'll have to make sacrifices. They want you to do everything on your own. Yeah, do free <clears throat> free releases on the singles or free shows and stuff like that. Um, which they, you know, would have told me about that then. 
instead of me going into it. But I'm grateful that I went into it the way I did because I've learned a lot on my own. So that actually gives you, you know, a lot of game and being independent. And that's what's important nowadays because whoever helps you, they get a percentage. And sometimes they try to change you and what you're trying to really do, you know, creatively Mm -hmm. speaking. Mm -hmm. Um, So everybody wants to help you for a piece. Right. But not everybody wants to help you to get your own piece. Right. Yeah, so. Yeah. That's Definitely. what I would say as far as uh, that goes. Definitely. Um, I would say uh, I wish someone would have told me that um, that my creative process, the way that I create, is okay. <laughs> However long it takes, whatever comes out of it, it's okay, you know? And that creative process can change over time. Definitely. Yeah. Evolution. I don't know about you. I've had songs that I wrote completely in 10 minutes, and I've had songs that percolated in the head in two different parts, and suddenly, for like, you know, months, you're walking around, suddenly you're like, hey, there's yes, a thing. Yes, exactly. Um, and all, and some it. people create, like, I've also had songs that started as a, a just a little noodle, a little guitar, and that r- rattled around in there and it eventually became, oh, okay, let's try this. And then other songs where it started as a word. I literally said, hey, pick a letter. And I would come up with a word and I would build it from there as a, as a songwriting exercise. And they're not my favorite songs, to be honest. But, but yeah, your songwriting process, your creative process yes. is yours. Own it. And, and if you're going to change it, change it. It's, it's up to you. It's yours. You don't, owe any, <laughs> you don't owe anybody an explanation or an apology for anything you do ever, unless, of course, you're hurting people. That's the whole other thing. And I would also like to add that upon doing music with my husband, this relationship, this bond and creating music with my husband is the first time ever in music where I've been able to express myself however I feel. So it has been definitely a gift and I'm grateful. You know what? And that is kudos to you. (laughs) Kudos to to you because not everybody can be in a band or a group with their, with their spouse. Or their significant oh, yes. other. <laughs> and you know, like my wife, my wife will never be the merch girl. She, my wife will never, if, I'm not going to be in, in bands anymore. I was told no. <laughs> I, room six no, takes no. all my all my spare time. But I was told, in no uncertain terms, you're not joining any more bands. <laughs> I'm here. Yes, I'm there you go. But hey, 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 don't leave her hanging, man. There you go. So, but that being said, my wife is super supportive in me and in, in the way she's supportive of me and she says, have fun. Let me know when you're going to be home. And like, <laughs> right, that's right. it. You know, oh, hey, that's cool. She doesn't try to force it. You two don't have to force it. I can see there's a chemistry, but also there's creative chemistry. And it's very obvious you've been doing this a while. And it's very obvious that um, the, the relationship came first. Oh, yes. You know, we've all seen the celebrity relationships where you already know what I do, and now let's make a relationship, and oh, wait, oh, yeah. we're, we're divorced. <laughs> yeah. wow. And that's why, I did, that's why I would like to add, like, this right here is special. That's oh, thanks, man. <laughs> yeah, room six. I'm talking about room six Definitely. as well. You know, <laughs> but yeah, this thing, man, because from, like you said, mm-hmm. everybody that's there is already there. They connect. <clears throat> they connect the with the seat at the top. Yeah. What some of you don't know is they have together six kids. Yeah, that total <laughs> to still create and still go out there and put out shows yeah. and show up and show out with six kids. Yeah, that's it. So impressive. I have one, Yo. and I took a two year hiatus from music because of that. <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna make sure this kid is gonna be, you know. Decent, right, right. straightforward oh, yeah. and stuff. And then I got into YouTube. But yes, yeah. kudos on you. So thank you very much for hanging in there with us. Stick around. We're going to see them up in room six. We're going to see an awesome performance. Thank you for being on the channel. Thank you. Thanks and, for uh, having us. No worries. Thank you. Room six. And uh, we'll temporarily uh, say goodbye and see you upstairs.
Is it cold outside where you lay your head at night thinking of how you're gonna be lonely in this struggle to survive? Did I mention the pain? The weather don't exclude the rain. We hustle mind and body to fight and fight. This nine to five ain't right. But if you take a second, pick up your head and listen, I can show you what you've been missing. Everybody, anybody, anywhere. It's a revolution, new ascension. We give it to our savior. Uh-huh. He's looking at your favor. Uh-huh. You can find relief in knowing that if you keep going, you may not find yourself. Without the pain, there's no success. So poke your chest, keep an open mind with no regrets. The goal is set, so place your bets. Advance up front line, then retrospect. Respect the steps. I'm a natural. God, he is actual. Gratitude, my attitude while weaving through the massacre. These challenges are turning to a savage on his concrete. Gotta let ego and let G-O-D while getting P-O-D. Getting high off the leaf, a pound of tree on me. I'm addicted to peace with my peace on me. Live a life of a king with my Q-U-E-E-N. Yeah, there is no end. This is just the beginning, only win on wins. L is a lesson like a so-called friend, but, but it's really all a blessing as the world spins. Room six. Allow me to give you a second to check your wrist, giving you my third wish. Now figure out what time this is. We're wasting your time and waking your mind so that you can define all the differences. Everybody fine on them Christmases till you can decline on the witnesses and go from being just a little bit fake in the face to contaminate the whole damn place. Walking through the door, I'm a vibe. Walker's unruly, effortless beauty. Real nigga by my side. Handle my booty, plus he a cutie. Y'all know that we fly. This is how we ride. Finna paint the town, poppy holding down parlay with a real one from the west side now my stay stay on my mind and i stay stay on my grind ain't no wasting of my time that's the way i was designed we living it up it's the life only real ones know that got it written all down in my notepad then i'm shining up the crown for the throwback bring me three ice cubes and a cognac i got the map to the treasure more clues i'm getting better closer to the cheddar so i move with my beretta no pressure on the professor proceed with my endeavors into my sector uninvited and meet the record it's a love hate thing that the world has with success when you're labeled the best and unlike the rest you a target living a land of the heartless that makes you a marksman stay sharpened while the seeds in the garden Got to keep the grow up until the harvest show up. I'm a grind till this whole thing blow up. Till then, this M I Thorpe. See you along. Side me is the queen from the lobby to the master suite. They try me like I ain't gasoline. She fire. Watch her ignite the king. To protect the boy, I direct the war. It's a W, perceptor, electric core. To the max, I impact. Best rest assured. If you try me, you'll find what you're dying for. <laughs> Room six. Inhale, exhale, inhale, blow it out. Hey, inhale, exhale, inhale, blow it out. Inhale, exhale, inhale, blow it out. Let's go, let's go. What time is it? Get high. What time is it? What time is it? It's time to get high. What time is it? What time is it? Come to get high. What time is it? What time is it? It's time to get high. I'm here for elevation. Get high. Inhale, exhale, it's inhale, time to blow get it out. High. Inhale, exhale, inhale, blow it out. High. Inhale, exhale, it's time to get high. Yeah, I'm here for elevation. Bad habit, high THC, this the major league. Got a couple fats, roll from a couple of sacks of that Mac that'll smack the soul of Joe back and forth. See, saw what a feeling when I light that torch, kept him off the porch, and now ashing out the front of the porch for whole bags of the flower galore. Fully equipped when the range is poor, I said, got it for the low dough. Until he cash me out, hell, I'm a no show. Better put your money where that bomb drove is. Who all been addicted, all know it. That high percentage, we all blow it. Get high so high like I don't know it. Remain calm for show, cause I'm showing. Sure Look, the dopest, I'm focused. Came from the lowest, so I get high, third eye open. Oh, I love this herb I'm smoking. Lock coast to Nostra while coasting. Hit on my lap, I'm roasting. Off that potent green, grown in the ocean. Known as OG, I'm G double OD. In 
in motion. Me and my chick, we zoning. Look, get high. It's time to get high. You come to get high. It's time to get high. I'm here for elevation. Get high. Look, inhale, exhale. It's time to Blow get high. You come to get high. Inhale, exhale. It's time to get high. Inhale. It's about a quarter past four. You already know there's no tis, no sense, nigga. I told. Fill in a room with the legendary smoke. Bet you're never gonna get it in vogue. Cause ain't no passing on no my personal. You know the grass gonna keep me merciful. I get a high that's irreversible. When the purse is low, I be the first to go. Lip gloss for the lips get darker. And ain't no bending over like Miss Parker. Cause I'm 100% high. My head to the sky with this first with a permanent. Marijuana, hemp, cannabis, ganja, weed. I think a little bit of this is all I need. And we've agreed to leave. The elite need to free to proceed to succeed. Yes, indeed. Lifted, gifted, drifting high. Instantly twisted and justified. Tell bro hand pass you the blunt back. And don't be looking my direction like you want that. I don't care what you want to call this. Keep it polished. Just don't call it a comeback. I want to thank Get Addicted Mafia for coming by. It was a great interview and a great performance. Definitely, definitely check them out by clicking the link down in the description for all their social media. And if you want to be on the channel, hit me up using my email address down there or click on the Room 6 social media link as well. That's also where you can find ways to support the channel, such as room6.shop for merch, my own two CDs that I've got out, or you can become a patron on my Patreon page. I've got some patron-only content and it really does all help me make better videos or help me help the local music scene. Uh, in the meantime, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. And if you'd like to subscribe, you know what to do. Click down there and don't forget to ring the bell. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye, guys. Goodbye. Bye, guys. ba da ba ba da <laughs> <laughs> There's always one.